Hello everybody and welcome to Phone Dog Live. I'm glad everyone is here. My name is Sydney. In case this is your first time again, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Sydney from Phone Dog. I'm the teen lifestyle editor, so I do mostly the you know low-end smartphones, feature phones. And uh, so we're going to do this. This is our, kind of our visual podcast. not quite a podcast because it's not just me talking. It's also I'll have pictures and all kinds of visual stuff for you guys. So we have some very interesting topics this week. But first of all, I have to say, since I'm from Dallas, I'm kind of obligated to say this, although I don't mind. Uh, I have to say congratulations to the Mavericks on getting a win in the NBA Finals I am a fan, and so, you know, like I said, I don't mind congratulating them, but it's pretty exciting. Um, I haven't been watching them. I watched them a couple of seasons, and then my husband's been watching them for like 10 years, and so he's really happy. But everyone in Dallas is going crazy, so the series is tied 1-1, so go Dallas. Also, kind of uh, exciting news today just kind of popped up. I wasn't expecting it. Um, and I wasn't supposed to say um. I'm not going to say um this time. I'm going to use discipline and not say um, because a lot of people commented about that. There were some, uh, (laughs) I just, never mind. There were some new teaser videos, not quite trailers, but new teaser videos for the new Batman movie, which is supposed to come out, is it this July or is it next July? I don't know, but it's sometime in the summer. I don't know if it's this year or next year, I, I forget when, but they were really creepy teaser trailers. I don't know if you guys saw them. You can, uh, they're on YouTube, and then people have been posting them all throughout Twitter, and that's where I saw it. Our uh, our sister site, or one of our partner sites, Scribble.com, which is our social media site, they also posted the link to the videos. So you can watch them, and they're not quite trailers, they're kind of these weird teaser videos, kind of like Cloverfield, reminded me a lot of the whole Cloverfield, you know, the way that they promoted that, but um, it, I don't know, it was, they were creepy, kind of interesting, so... I'm excited about the new Batman movie, and then now I don't really know what to expect. But if you haven't seen them, you should go check them out. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Like I said, a lot of fun topics. If you're on Ustream, you can already see the topic at the top of the chat window. Is uh, Our first topic, at least, is WWDC and what to expect in iOS 5. And uh, I will also be on our Facebook page. So if you are on Facebook, let me go over there. So if you're on Facebook, and there are, there's at least one guy on Facebook, I'll also be checking the comments there, uh, though most of the time I notice that it's kind of just me talking and then you guys have your own separate conversation on Ustream, so you know whatever doesn't really bother me. But I will be checking them throughout, throughout the chat or throughout the broadcast. And then, and then at the end, we'll have a couple of topics, and then at the end, We'll have an open Q&A, so if you have any random questions that are not related to the topic that we're talking about at the moment, just save them until the end, till the last 15 minutes, and then I'll answer any questions that you guys have. But first, we're going to talk, talk about iOS 5, then we're going to move on to a couple of, uh, this new Android tablet phone tablet pad thingy that was released by Asus. We're talking about that, and then also, what else do we have? Oh, feature phones. Are feature phones dying? And I and I know that sounds not really interesting. Like nobody cares about feature phones, but it's it's interesting. I promise. And then there's some extras at the bo- at the at the end that I want to talk about. So first, WWDC and what to expect in iOS five. And this is of course a huge topic because you know everybody cares about what Apple does. The iPhone for a long time, and I think even now still they. Apple sets the bar with what smartphones should do, what they should be, what they should deliver. And so people always pay very close attention to what Apple does with the iPhone and, of course, with iOS. Now, we do know, it's pretty much been confirmed, that we're not going to see the new iPhone at WWDC. So that's probably going to come later on. In, uh, we hear maybe August or September, we know it's going to be a little late, and so we're not going to see the iPhone. But we do know that we're going to see a lot of updates to iOS 5. That's going to be basically the huge thing. So let me just run down the list of some of the updates that we are kind of sure about, are pretty sure, or have at least heard about that could come. Multitasking, 
which is something that you know people have wanted for a long time. I mean, Android has multitasking, WebOS has multitasking, and uh, it's just right now uh, Apple added a sort of multitasking, but it's not really multitasking. It's more like just app switching, and but we're hearing that they might introduce true multitasking. Over-the-air updates, which would be nice, you won't have to plug in your phone to your computer anymore. Widgets, and this is, you know, again, maybe widgets, maybe not, but, you know, it is something that people have really wanted, so we're hearing they could add widgets. A notification system, which would be awesome, I don't even have to elaborate on that. iCloud, that one's pretty definite, we're pretty sure we're going to see iCloud. Uh, Twitter integration, deep Twitter integration into the OS, and then a couple of other little things. So, first of all, you know, I personally think that Apple really needs to add at least a, a better notification system than what they have in order to compete. I mean, obviously Apple can do whatever they want and still sell phones, but I mean, really I think they owe it to their customers. They've been waiting a long time. A lot of people just jumped ship and said, hey, I don't have to put up with this. Android has an awesome notification system. WebOS has an awesome notification system. I don't have to put up with this, and they just jump, jump ship and switch. But a lot of people didn't, and they stayed, and so I think Apple owes it to them to add at least a notification system. Widgets would be awesome, but I'm not too sure because, you know, it's, Android is kind of known for widgets, and so if Apple added widgets, then it'd kind of be like they're basically just copying off of Android, and I, and I just don't think Apple would do that. And then multitasking, that's like one of those duh things. I just, I think that they should really add that. Now, the question is, are they actually going to add these features? I mean, we can talk all day about how Apple should add them, and how it makes sense, and how they're completely capable of adding them. But are they actually going to do it? So, We've heard a lot of rumors that say, that point to them possibly adding some of these at least. Uh, a while back, Rich Dellinger, it's either Dellinger or Dellinger, and see, here's a problem with words. Whenever you work in online media, you never hear people say stuff. You only read it. Like, my entire job is, is reading stuff all day long, and so I never get to hear anyone say this. So I'm going to say it's Dellinger because... That's what I think it should be. Now, okay, Rich Dellinger, he invented the notification system for WebOS. And if you haven't used a WebOS device, which would be the Palm Pre or the Palm Pixie, uh, their notification system is great because basically you have the screen and then whenever you get an email or a message or you know whatever it would be, uh, at the bottom of the screen, this little panel just kind of pops up and it gives you some quick details about what it is that you missed. And that panel stays there until you either select it, uh, well, yeah, you ha until you select it, it stays there. It very, you know, it's refined, it's unobtrusive, it's not like in your face, but it's very effective. And so he, Rich Dellinger is the guy that invented that notification system. He recently joined Apple. He quit a, a Palm, at the time it was Palm. He quit and uh, he joined Apple, so we're thinking notification system. Uh, also, in February, Cult of Mac reported that Apple was working to acquire a company that developed an app that was designed to simulate a notification system. We didn't exactly know which app or we know which company it was, but we just knew that it was a company. Also, and this was just today, I was you know writing all these notes and writing the blog post recap article for afterwards. Um, and just today, within the past hour, I think, uh, TechCrunch, or Mobile Crunch, I think it might have been, uh, just reported that Apple also, where are my notes, Apple hired Peter Hages, Hages, which is this guy that developed a notification system for jailbroken iPhones, and it worked, you know, sort of similar to WebOS and Android, little panel pops down, gives you some information, also allows you, say you get a text message, when you select that notification, a window automatically pops up where you can respond. It doesn't open the app, it just opens a nice little window. Anyway, it was a really well-designed app. Your phone had to be jailbroken in order to use it, but they just hired him. So all of those point to Apple getting a new notification system, which is great in itself. 
Now with widgets, you know, like I said, I don't really know if Apple's going to do this, but uh, we do know that Apple has filed for a couple of patents that involve creating a system of widgets. Now it's not cr not quite, I almost said quite, I don't even know if that's a word, not quite you just, you know, widgets that we see on Android. It's kind of a different system in the way that they would be integrated in the way that they would work but it was widgets nonetheless. Now we don't have a lot of you know, details on that. It's mostly just these random patents that we found that Apple filed for. And so, you know, that's kind of, you know, like I said, I don't think widgets is a big thing. I think notifications is definitely more sure. Over the year updates, that's more sure. And then iCloud, we're definitely gonna see. The Twitter integration, um, you know, we've kind of gone back and forth on how deep it's going to be. Is it just going to be with pictures, make it easier to upload pictures to Twitter? Or now we're hearing it's going to be deep, deep integration to the OS. So, you know, we're not really sure about that. I did want to share with you guys, you know, through the years and, you know, past couple months, people have posted a lot of concept ideas on what they think would be a good idea for or how Apple should do notifications and widgets. And, you know, we don't know how Apple is going to do it. We don't know, you know, what they're going to decide to do. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to just look at some of these ideas that people have had and then maybe kind of get a feel for, for maybe what they could do. So this one idea that one developer or, you know, concept artist had was to have an actual app that would be called Notifications. And whenever you selected this app, first of all, it would bring up a little tab at, at the bottom. And this is a common thread, having just a little tab at either the bottom or the top. But it would bring up, you know, your notifications. And then whenever you opened that app, it would be an actual app. Whenever you opened it, it would show you know, your notifications. And you could group it by uh, list. You could group it by the kind of notification. Uh, and then, you know, there's different views that you could have. And, you know, it's simple, but it works. It wouldn't be a radical change. You can see it also show you notifications on the unlock screen. So not a radical change because, you know, we realize that Apple obviously wants to stick with the design that they already have. So it just, why not just add an app that's the notifications app? So that was one idea. And, uh, you know, I thought it... I thought that'd be a great idea. Again, we don't know if they're going to use it. Um, here's another idea for notifications. Again, on the unlock screen, just, you know, very unobtrusive. Just show you some quick notifications. And then when you unlock it, whenever, you, you know, you're actually in the home screen, little tab that would pull up at the bottom, and it'll show you, show you your notifications. Very simple and easy. It'll open up a little pop-up window and then you can slide through the different notifications like cards. So I thought that was a pretty good idea. And, uh, you know, not to be redundant, but I mean, it's obvious that Apple could do this and it would be very simple for them to do. So I think the, these ideas are, uh, are pretty cool. Some of them, you know, they kind of reminded me, there was one idea, one concept idea I saw that was basically just like Android. And I mean, it was a great idea whenever I saw it. I was like, that's a great idea. But then I realized, Wait a minute, that's what Android does. That's why it's such a good idea, because somebody already uses it. So, you know, obviously, that you know, I think that's the problem that Apple is facing. They obviously have to have a notification system, but how do they do it without making it look like they just copied off of everyone else? Um, and there's not really a way that they couldn't do that, or that they could do that, because a notification system is actually really simple. It is just a tab. You can have it at the top like Android or at the bottom like WebOS. I mean, unless Apple's going to have it pop in from the side. I mean, really, there's not a way they could do it that's different. But So those are some concept ideas for, for notifications that I think are simple. And again, you know, who knows what Apple is going to end up doing. There's also been some pretty cool widget ideas. And, you know, I'm going to just entertain these, even though, like I said, I don't know if Apple is actually going to add widgets. But here's this one idea where... Whenever you scroll over to the, to the spotlight page where you know, it brings up the keyboard and you can search, next to that little input box, there would be an add new widget button. And whenever you selected that, it would open up a little panel with all of the available widgets. So you can see here the person has your know, calendar, Facebook. And so you could select a widget, the widget would pop out, 
and then you could drag it to the desired home screen and it would you know move into the home screen basically like Android widgets do you know just have a home screen and then you can have uh, apps underneath that it. it wouldn't take up the whole page so really simple but again still keeping with what Apple currently has in their same design okay we already have the spotlight page let's just add a new button and they'll add widgets so really simple um, I like that idea this guy actually has two ideas the guy that designed this and I can't remember his name I know I should give credit to him but I, I just don't have his name in my notes but uh, he actually had two ideas that was the first idea to have that little drop down you know push the button and the the tab comes down with your available widgets and then drag it to a home screen his other idea is to have just pages set aside for widgets so this is basically how it would work. Let's see, widget idea. That's not the one I want. Let me go to the picture I want. Widget idea B3. So you would have your home screen, and then to the right, you can see these are the pages that are set aside for apps. And then to the left, these are the pages that, is, that are set aside for widgets. And you can see that icon looks familiar because it's the dashboard icon in uh, Mac OS 10, and so you know again something that's already in use and it would be really simple for Apple to add. So you know this idea you could either have widgets that are added to the home screen or you could have just a completely separate page for widgets. Basically like what's in Mac OS 10 right now whenever you push the dashboard icon it kind of fades everything into the background and then opens and brings your widgets to the forefront. It could be your know, calendar or you know, whatever it is that you've downloaded and so it would be kind of like that in iOS, it would just be separate pages. So those are some interesting ideas. And then you kind of have the obvious one of just have widgets, you know. Why not just have widgets like everyone else, like Android? But obviously this one is just, this is just too close to Android. And so, you know, like I said, I, widgets, I think, yeah, it'd be awesome. And they could add it. There's a possibility but there's really no way that they could do it without just saying, you know, well, Android has widgets, so let's add widgets. You know, I mean, not every OS has widgets. WebOS doesn't. You know, Windows Phone 7 has the live tiles, which is sort of similar. It's the same idea, just visually different. So, you know, but not every OS has widgets. And so it's not entirely necessary. And if they did, the only person they'd be copying off of is Android. So... I don't really think it'd be a good idea, but um, yes, I can see your chat, and uh, I I occasionally skim through it, but for the most part, I just let you guys have a conversation. If I see a comment that I you know obviously like this one that I needed to comment on, then I'll, I'll comment on it. Jan Michael Cart, that's the name. Thank you, uh, Taylor. That BB Casper, that's Taylor Martin from uh, Phone Dog. The the guy's name was Jan Michael Cart. And uh, I think, Taylor, you're actually the editor on our website that posted an article about some of these different ideas for notifications and widgets. So anyway, so those are, those are some concept ideas. You know, and you guys feel free to, to leave your opinions. Do you think that, and that, that Android, that Apple needs to add widgets and a notification system, or would you be happy with just a notification system? I personally think that really at this point a notification system is really, I, I mean widgets would be nice, but, and I always said if Apple added widgets and a, and a better notification system to iOS, I would buy an iPhone. And if they do add it, I would seriously consider buying an iPhone because, you know, the, just the, the, the performance of iOS is, is seamless, it's polished, it's refined, it's just beautiful, aesthetically pleasing. However, the features just aren't there that I want. So if they did add those, um, I, I would be inclined to buy one. Not saying that I would, but I would definitely be inclined to buy one. Uh, Sid, do you think that Apple will do away with the home button in iOS 5? You know, there was talk of that, and it's kind of died down. We have it. There was sort of a couple of rumors and articles that kind of brought it to life, and then it kind of just died down. We hadn't heard anything about it since then. So I don't really know about that, but um, maybe in the next version, in the next iPhone, maybe with the next version of iOS, that could be a possibility. 
But uh, whenever the, the beta was released for iOS 4.2, was it? Or somebody correct me on that if I'm wrong. Whenever the beta was released of the last iOS update, um, when it was released to developers, it had these gesture, you know, um, gesture features available for, that developers could test out. And so it kind of led everyone to believe that the next version, or that that version, was going to have no home screen button. But then, in the next, when the, in the next beta that was released to developers, that feature wasn't available. So, you know, I probably don't. I don't think so. But again, you know, I could be wrong. So, that's uh, that's what we're hearing that could come out of WWDC. We're pretty sure that it is going to be all software. So iOS and macOS, you know, Lion, is going to be basically the the big stories. Speaking of of. Uh, iOS and uh, iCloud. We are we're pretty certain that iCloud is going to be announced. That's that's Apple's music streaming service. We talked about that. Uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before. We talked about you know what exactly Apple's going to do with it. We have a leaked picture of the icon, and so I want to show you to you guys uh, if I can find it. iCloud. Here we go. Okay, so here, and and you'll have to. You're looking through a glass door, so. You can see it's the picture on the far left. There's two, there's, can't tell if there's two pictures. But anyway, it's the picture of the cloud in black outline and the silver background. So really simple. But that we can see is the, supposedly the icon for iCloud, which is pretty, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Apple is known for keeping everything under really tight wraps before any major announcement. So I think it's pretty cool that they actually, that someone was, Someone managed to snap this picture, and why they didn't cover up the door, I don't know. Uh, anytime Apple does anything, like, everything is covered. I remember whenever they were updating the, uh, actually, they weren't even, this wasn't even when they updated the Apple store. It was just our store in particular in Dallas, the one in downtown Dallas, the big one. They decided to make it larger. And so they were just remodeling it. It wasn't anything, you know, corporate Apple, like all of the stores were doing it. It was just this one store just remodeling. And they covered up everything. They had black, you know, the blankets and the boards everywhere. So you couldn't even see in. And it wasn't even that big of a deal. They were just remodeling. So Apple's really secretive. So I'm surprised that, uh, that we managed to get that icon. But there it is. Just wanted to show it to you guys. So that's iOS 5. Those are the rumors. That's what we're thinking we're going to see. And, uh, you know, basically we'll just, we'll just have to wait, wait and see. I'm going to take a drink really quick, if you guys don't mind. It's just water. Um, I had Sprite a couple weeks ago, but this is just boring water. I'm sorry, it's just my voice. I need water to keep my voice going good. So, uh, next... Next up, this week, this was an interesting release uh, from Asus, and uh, it's a tablet. It's like it's a tablet phone. It's called the Asus Pad Phone, and, uh, you know, weird name, but whatevs. Uh, it's called the Asus Pad Phone, and it's basically a phone that can also function as a tablet, and I'm going to show you the picture uh, just so you can, it'd be better than me trying to explain it. So here's the Asus Pad Phone. And as you can see, so you have the phone, and the phone currently has a 4.3 inch display. Asus, Asus said that this isn't final, that they could change it, but it's just a normal phone, you know, with a large display. And then you pop it into this, you know, mechanism in the back of the tablet, and then you close it up, and then you close it up and so it's all, you know, fit nicely in there. And then the tablet just functions as a tablet. Now, the kind of, you know, don't get too ahead of yourself because it's not like you have a tablet and a phone. The tablet is just a shell. It doesn't function on its own. It's just the shell and then once you actually plug in the phone, then it, you know, lights up. A lot like the, the laptop dock that, uh, that Motorola came, that the Atrix came with, kind of like that. It's just a shell. But then the phone makes it come to life, like Frankenstein. So, and whenever I first heard this, I originally thought that, you know, it was going to be using either, I guess, gingerbread or, you know, some other OS. And so I was like, well, 
then whenever you stick it in there, you know, is it just going to run gingerbread? I mean, that's not really optimized for tablets. Is it just going to upscale everything? Is it just going to enlarge it? Because it's not a tablet. It's just a bigger screen. It just makes everything on the phone bigger, basically. So I was like, that doesn't... But apparently it's going to ship with Ice Cream Sandwich, which is the version of Android that's designed to run on both phones and tablets. And it won't just upscale everything. It won't just, you know, enlarge it. It will, it will upscale it. That's right. It won't just enlarge it. It'll actually, you know, make it fit to its resolution so it won't be all grainy. It'll actually look like, you know, just a normal tablet. And since it's a version of the OS that's meant for both phones and tablets, then it'll actually work pretty smoothly. Now, since they are waiting for Ice Cream Sandwich, it's not going to be out until probably this Christmas, I think is what they said. So, kind of interesting. There's some pros and cons to this. A few of the pros are that the tablet actually acts as a charger. So, you'll get a lot more battery life out of your phone. You can just plug in your phone to the, to the tablet shell and it charges your phone, so that's nice. Also, you won't need two separate data plans. Because it's just a shell, you won't need a data plan for the tablet and the phone. You'll just need one, and then when they're connected, it just shares the data plan. So, that's nice. And, and you won't have to wait for updates for both devices, just one phone. Now, there's some cons to this. Um, to me, I think the biggest con is that you're not actually getting a tablet. You're just getting the shell, and so you can't use both at the same time. You can't use them separately. You, know, you can't just, of course, I don't know if you would leave your phone at home and then take your tablet, but I mean, say, theoretically, you wanted to do that. You can't just use the tablet by itself and then have the phone, you know, separately. So, and some people do that. So that's kind of a downside. And then, of course, who knows how much it's going to cost and if people are actually going to go for it. You know, with the Atrix, um, I heard a lot of people didn't even bother getting the laptop dock because it was just too expensive. And then AT&T added that ridiculous tethering plan that was just dumb and unnecessary and not really related to anything. You didn't need a tethering plan. Um, so, you know, the carriers are probably going to do something dumb like that because, you know, God forbid you save money on a data plan. But so once the carriers get a hold of it, it could not be as cool as as we think. But, you know, and people are kind of, I don't know, it's kind of mixed feelings that I'm getting. Um, by the way, it, it does have a dual core processor. Uh, the smartphone, the phone will have a dual core processor. Now, I'm getting, when I read articles, it's kind of mixed feelings. Some people think it's a great, great idea, some people think it's dumb. And, uh, you know, I think, to me, it reminds me a lot of the Transformer, which was that also by Asus is a 10 inch tablet and it's actually you know a tablet and then they created a very well designed uh, keyboard and it could dock into the keyboard and there would be like a netbook and you could even close it if you want to and just you know carry it around like a netbook um, and so you know the same thing is that not everyone thinks that's useful and not everyone will see a need for it but some people will some people will love the idea and they'll buy it others won't I think it'd be the same thing with this it's just another option, you know, and it's it's great to have options, and so um, at least that's that's my take on it. Um, but uh, we'll have to see. I don't think we have any pricing on it yet. And uh, like I said, Asus said that the the, the sizes and everything. The tablet's gonna have a 10.1 inch display, or currently has a 10.1 inch display, and then the phone has a 4.3 inch display. But Asus said that's not final; that it could end up changing. Um, but I think they definitely should wait to get ice cream sandwich. I think that's crucial to make every, making everything work pretty smoothly. Um, I don't know why I did that. Yes, screenshots. Thank you. Ice cream sandwich is going to be like honeycomb for the most part, but it will display differently on phones and tablets. Mainly AT&T will do another useless thing to anger consumers. Her and Aaron should share. Uh, so what was the price of the Atrix dock? Uh, I think total with everything, wasn't it like 500 or something like that? The phone and the, the laptop dock together, it was like 500 and something, if I remember correctly. Which for most people, you know, yeah, it's more economical than buying a phone and a netbook, I guess. But it just didn't make sense, uh, I think, to most people. So the dock itself was 500, so yeah. So, uh, I don't know, interesting, and, and we'll have to see if, if consumers really pick up on that. So, 
Moving on to the next topic, moving right along. This is our last topic, and then I have a couple of extras after this, and then we'll get on to the uh, to the open Q and A. So this is the topic. I mentioned this in the beginning. Are feature phones dead? And I know most of you guys are like, yes, feature phones are dead, nobody cares about them. But I care about them because I review feature phones. And so while you may not pay attention to the feature phone market, I do very closely, which isn't that difficult because feature phones are never released anymore. So it's actually, you know, not that, you know, and time intensive. But anyway, so the reason I brought this up, though, is because this week we heard of uh, two new phones that T-Mobile is getting they're both basically kind of, you know, mid-range to low-end phones, but one of them uh, caught my eye, and it's the Gravity, it's being called the Gravity Smart. So here it is, it's called the Gravity Smart, and uh, if you're on T-Mobile or if you follow the news or whatever, you know that uh, T-Mobile had a messaging phone lineup, and it was called, the phones were called Gravity, so there was the Gravity and then the Gravity 2, they had the Gravity T, which was the Gravity Touch, but they were feature phones, messaging phones, and now apparently it's being turned into a smartphone. And this is kind of a trend, you know, we had uh, the Sidekick, that was originally a feature phone, a messaging phone, and that was turned into a smartphone. We had the Envy Pro, which was a messaging phone, that was recently turned into a smartphone, it's known as the Genesis, it's on US Cellular, but it was turned into a smartphone. Now we have the Gravity, it's being turned into a smartphone, and then we have another phone, this phone, which some people are speculating could be a revamped Sharp FX, which was also a feature phone, but now it's going to be a smartphone. And so we're kind of seeing this trend of carriers. I mean, you know, for me, it was okay that they didn't want to release any more feature phones or kind of like slow down the release of them because you know, people are moving to smartphones and maybe focus your efforts there. but. Now, you know, not only are they not creating new feature phones, carriers are intentionally removing feature phones from their lineup by turning them into smartphones. So the Gravity, a great messaging phone, will no longer be available. The Sidekick, which was a great messaging phone, probably the only good messaging phone on T-Mobile, is no longer available as a messaging phone. You had to get the smartphone. The Sharp FX, a great messaging phone from AT&T, it's, I guess, will no longer be available if this is, in fact, a revamped Sharp FX. It will now be a smartphone. The Envy Pro, great messaging phones. Now it's a smartphone. So feature phones, it seems that they're just dying. And I know, you know, most people are going to say, well, most people have smartphones, so who cares about messaging phones? And I, I know the ratio, you know, I know the stats, but... Even if 90% of consumers had smartphones, and the number isn't even that high, it's not 90%, but just, you know, for argument's sake, even if 90% of consumers had smartphones, the 10% of people that did have feature phones, they still deserve to have premium feature phone options. You know, without the Sidekick, without the Sharp FX, without the, the Envy, without the, the Gravity, what are we left with? On T-Mobile, you're left with the freaking Samsung Smiley, which is a real phone name, by the way, which is just dumb. But you're left with that phone, and I understand it's all about money, and they're trying to get everyone to move to smartphones, but not everyone wants a smartphone. Not everyone can afford a decent smartphone. I know there are smartphones out there that are free, but they're pieces of junk for the most part, and not everyone wants to have to pay for the data plan. So I just think it's a shame that manufacturers and carriers refuse to deliver great products to all of their customers. I understand it's all about money, and there's nothing I can do about that, but it appears that the feature phone is dying, uh, and so it's disappointing. Um, I think it's a market that's still needed. Yeah, most people don't have a feature phone, but a lot of people do. When I go out and I pay attention to the phones that people have because, you know, I do cell phone reviews. So every time I see somebody with their phone, I always look really closely to see, you know, which phone it is. And I can usually tell, you know, if you follow phones, you can usually tell which kind of phone a, a person has. And I, a lot of people still have feature phones. I noticed that. 
And so, uh, you know, I think manufacturers should really should really deliver in that area. But, you know, again, this is just me ranting, and they, they probably won't, um, but we'll just have to see. Um, but I just wanted to, it's interesting that that trend uh, to now just taking all these feature phones and making them smartphones, because I guess they just ran out, of, ran out of ideas on what to do. But anyway, so uh, the question, are feature phones dead? The answer is basically, Yes, they are dead. It's unfortunate, but I guess that's the market we live in. So next, this is the last topic, basically just extras, which is kind of what we have every time at the at the end before we go on to the to the open Q and A. Just some quick extras that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, we had some new phones. We had some uh, some updates. We had some pretty cool announcements. First of all, Evo 4G is getting Android 2.3. So if you haven't gotten it yet, you can get the manual update or wait for the over-the-air update. Um, but if you've wondered that, it's now available. So 2.3 available for the Evo 4G. Also, um, the Droid X, we, we know that's getting 2.3 already, but it appears that it could be bricking, or not bricking, but screwing up some devices and so I don't know maybe be wary of that of course if it is mess if it does mess it up you can always take it to the carrier store and I'm sure they'll be willing to help you out or give you a replacement and I'm sure Motorola will catch on to this and will release another update that fixes all of the bugs so um, you know don't worry too much about that we also um, along with that the gravity smart that I talked about coming to uh, coming to T-Mobile. There's another phone also coming to T-Mobile. It's called the Exhibit 4G. Here it is. It's made by Samsung. And uh, it's a 4G phone, obviously, coming June 8th, so, you know, not too far away. has a 1 gigahertz Hummingbird processor, a 3 megapixel camera with a flash, and a front-facing camera, as you can see. It, it will ship with 2.3, has a 3.7-inch display, uh, with a resolution of 800 by 480. So, you know, whenever I first heard those specs, I was like, oh, one gigahertz processor, yay, it's probably going to be like a high-end phone. Phone, And then I heard a 3 megapixel camera and a 3.7 inch display with 800 by 480. Is this a, a high-end phone or a mid-range phone? And then I realized that, you know, with all these dual-core processors or these phones with dual-core processors coming out, I guess one gigahertz is now mid-range phone, I, I don't know. Um, and then 3 megapixel camera, I don't think that's adequate for a mid-range phone. Um, now that we're getting all the way up to 8 megapixels, I would think that like 5 megapixels would be mid-range, but whatevs. And uh, the resolution, so it's obviously is a mid-range phone, but it does have that Hummingbird processor, so uh, jump on that if you want a good phone, but not like, you know, you don't want to pay $200 for it. I think if you're on T-Mobile, that would definitely be a good option. And apparently shipping with 2.3, so pretty exciting. We also saw some leaked pictures of the My Touch 4G slide. I'm especially excited about this one because I love the My Touch phones. I'm really into custom skins, and I think the My Touch phones have like the heaviest custom skin ever. Um, but I love it; it's awesome. And so here's the picture. Uh, one of the pictures of the My Touch 4G slide. So you can see the uh, the keyboard, basically like the MyTouch 3G slide. You know, not really different there. Uh, and then here's another picture. And as uh, so you can see, it's going to ship with Android 2.3.4. And then it will have that custom version of HTC Sense. So basically, the <coughs> excuse me, the design doesn't look very different. Looks like the MyTouch 4G just with the keyboard. Um, looks like it will have a front-facing camera and uh, let me see if I can get some of the other specs that we had for that phone. Um, I think the code name was the Double Shot. HTC Double Shot. So... Okay, here we go. So these were the rumored specs. Dual Core Snapdragon Processor 2.3 like you saw in the picture a 3.7 inch display, an 8 megapixel camera, the front facing camera like you saw in the picture, obviously will be a 4G phone, and then the keyboard is going to be basically like the MyTouch 3G slide, which I think was 
one of the um, best keyboards, uh, best physical keyboards I've ever used, and so I'm excited about that one. Um, but I've always liked, I've always liked the My Touch phones. Um, I don't know why. I just like, I like that custom UI, and I and I always like physical keyboards. And um, so I mean, I can get used to a virtual keyboard, and it's not too bad. But I just feel so much better with a physical keyboard. So those are the extras. And um, that's the news. So it's 4:40. I ended up a little bit. I ended a little bit, little early, but that's okay because it just gives you a little more time for an open Q and A. So I've kind of been off and on checking and not checking the chat stream, um, but now I will be checking it. Obviously, I'll be looking at it. So if you have any questions, feel free to just post anything, and I'll answer as many as I can. I, you know, may not know the answer to all of them, or may not be able to get to all of them, but, um, oh, also, also in an extra, I forgot to mention this, uh, Toshiba, we've known they were coming out with a tablet for a while, but we've sort of not really known when, or what is it, what is it going to be called, and specs, and things like that, but we got more details, it's going to be called the Toshiba Thrive, it's coming July 10th, an 8 gig version for 430, 16 gig version for 480, which is weird why I would just spend the fifty dollars anyway and a 32 gig version for 580 10.1 inch display honeycomb dual core nvidia tegra 2 processor 5 megapixel camera the front facing camera this is interesting it's actually going to have a full-sized sd card slot so really you could just go for the 8 gig model and then just pop in a in a sd card so okay so uh open q a probably do you like the pantech crossover um where the crossover go? It's back here. Let me get it really quick. Um, so, yeah, I just got the crossover yesterday, and I did an unboxing, and uh, here it is. It's a mid-range messaging phone. You can see, you know, it's really thick and big, and it's really heavy, too. Um, it's okay. It's uh, sometimes a little laggy. The screen doesn't always respond very well, and... Um, but uh, it's a mid-range phone. Also, it doesn't have a 1 gigahertz processor. I said in the unboxing that it does because the PR notes said it had a 1 gigahertz. And I was surprised by that. I didn't quite think it was right, but I said it because that's what the PR notes said. But I double-checked, and it's a 600 megahertz processor. Um, who's the best phone dog? Taylor Martin, of course. <laughs> I'm hating the ad. True, but they will have the cool features regular since. Says Windows Phone 7. Use a first generation processor or the second generation processor? I'm not sure. Someone says second generation, so I guess that's what it is. Are you hiring? We are always accepting applications. If you want to send your info in, you can send it to phonedogjobs at gmail.com. If you have a resume, if you have any writing samples or video samples, you can send that in. Um, is iOS dying? I don't think so. When is Aaron going to review the sensation? He just got it, so I'm, I'm thinking the unboxing should be up today, and then the review possibly, um, I would say Tuesday, maybe Monday or Tuesday, um, or Wednesday. I don't want, I don't want to give him a deadline. He's my boss, but I would say sometime early next week. Um, do you think that Apple's hiring of Peter Hayes means they haven't fixed notifications yet? Uh, I commented that on that on Twitter. I was like, if you're planning on fixing the notification system and announcing it at WWDC next week, now was not really a good time to hire somebody. But someone pointed out that this is when we're hearing that they hired him. They could have hired him months ago. And like I stated earlier, they also hired um, the guy that worked for WebO that worked for Palm and designed the WebOS notification system a long time ago. So. Um, no, I, I think by now it's it's done. Cricket Mobile now has the Galaxy Indulge. Awesome. Well, he just got to be patient. And what does the function key do? The function key on the on the the thing the what's this called the crossover? <laughs> it's a phone. Um, the function key. Let me make sure I'm getting on get on the camera here. Yeah, okay. The function key um, just opens sort of like this shortcut thing, so you can have you can set shortcuts. So I have like memo. Maps, phone, but you can set different shortcuts, and then that's basically all it is. It's not as cool as I thought it would be. Um, what did I miss? Sid, top five feature phones. Um, right now, I'd say the top ones are the uh, the Pantech Laser, 
the Samsung Craft, I'm thinking just off the top of my head. Um, there's one that I'm forgetting, I know it, but I'll have to, I'll have to wait. Let me come back to you on that. Okay. Uh, what phone do you like the most? Uh, do you mean like smartphones or feature phones? Uh, Rumor Touch, that would also be on my top five. Oh, Freestyle, that's right. Th thank you. So, okay. Um, yes, the Freestyle would be um, probably the best feature phone, and then the Pantech Laser, and then the Samsung Craft. Have you had any experience using the Motorola flip side? And if so, what was your opinion of his performance? I just got it, but I have time to return it. If you have an AT&T suggestions, what? Flip side, um, you know, not a big fan, mostly because I really don't like Moto Blur. And uh, the flip side was kind of like, you know, eh, it was all right. But um, if you need a physical keyboard, it's obviously probably your best option, unless you go with like a BlackBerry. Um, but if you need a physical keyboard, it would probably be your only option. Rumor touch, rumor touch. Are you going to the WWDC? I don't know. And I mean, I'm not. I don't know if Aaron is. I'm not sure. Smartphones. My favorite smartphone um, right now, I'm really excited about the Evo 3D, but um, I actually prefer TouchWiz. I like that UI, so I would say the Galaxy S2 would be my favorite right now. I am, do you know when you'll be getting the sensation? Aaron has it, LG Banter Touch Metro PCS. That's, yeah, right, the Rumor Touch. They just got it. Is it the same phone as Rumor Touch? Yes. Have you been on for the last minute? Yes, I think so. Okay, let me check out Facebook and uh, see if there's any questions there. I'm sorry I've been neglecting you guys, but I'm on Facebook now, so let me see if I can catch up. Uh, question, do you think that an HTC phone with a keyboard will come to Verizon? Um, yeah, I think... Let me see if I can... Um, I just said um like five times, and I, I promised I wouldn't. The... Phones coming to Verizon, eventually, yeah, I would say probably the HTC Merge. If it's ever coming to Verizon, I would say that'd be your best bet. It's on US Cellular right now, but we originally thought it was going to come to Verizon. And then, looks like that's all we know of right now, of uh, physical keyboards coming to Verizon. Is there any more Metro PCS phones coming out right now? Um, not that I know of, but we don't really hear a lot of rumors about prepaid phones, so I'm not sure. What do you hope to see in it with iOS 5? Um, notification system, definitely, but a notification system, I would love to see widgets, but I, I doubt that they're going to have that. I have the Samsung Craft Awesome. Hey, great to see you. Is the app that allows you, your phone, to take pics of the person who stole it on Android? I'm not sure. I haven't heard of an app like that. Uh, okay, I just answered that one. Okay, let me go back to Ustream. Do you think that the 550 price tag for the Sensation 4G off contract is a good price? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's pretty much standard. Um, I never recommend buying a phone off contract because uh, it's just uh, it's too expensive to me. I don't think it's worth it. And um, it, I know people like getting it because they can switch phones anytime they want, but I don't think it's necessary to switch phones every three months. So, But the price, yeah, I, mean, I think it would be pretty standard. How can you like TouchWiz? I just do really appreciate the info. I like Moto Blur. I'll be a regular here now. Thank you. Me too. The merge, the merge. I thought they said no to it for off contract. Yes, good price. The phone is getting old. Any news on when Android Metro PCS will release their next 4G Androids? This is interesting. I was at a Metro PCS store um, a couple weeks ago, a while ago, and uh, I overheard some a sales per a person. A customer was talking to a sales per person. And she wanted to know if they were getting any, any new phones. And I guess I could have said this whenever that other person asked, but I didn't think of it until now. And the, um, the retail associates said that they are going to get new Android phones within the next couple of months. And I can't remember if he said 4G phones or not, but I know he said Android smartphones. And we haven't heard any rumors on anything. So that's the only tidbit I know, but that's... That's all I know about, so um, that's the news. Okay, let me go down to the bottom. The Veer is too tiny to be good for web browsing. It's good for other stuff. Yeah, I think, I think. Do you have any HTC smartphones? Uh, no. No, I don't. 
What do you think of the BlackBerry Bold 9900? I think it's great. You know, it may not be enough to t entice new users over to BlackBerry, but for existing users, I think it's great. I'd definitely be happy with it. By the way, also, if you're watching this on Ustream, the recording of this, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll also be checking those comments after afterwards. And so, you know, I won't be able to see it now, obviously, but I'll be checking the comments and then I'll re respond to any that I can. Uh, probably will be at T-Mobile. I'm looking forward to the Bold Touch, iPhone 4 or BlackBerry Bold. You know, two different, really made for two different people. I still maintain that Blackberries are great for business users or like heavy, heavy textures, people that don't need a lot of multimedia features. And for those kind of people, Blackberry definitely. But for, you know, if you like the apps, if you want, you know, the hip phone that has all the cool features, uh, the iPhone definitely. Is it still not available? It's still not available, but that's the price when it is released. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the sensation. Okay. Your impression of the HTC Freestyle, anything comparable worth considering? The, the Freestyle, awesome. The best feature phone currently is a feature phone, but it's made by HTC, so it uses HTC Sense. So it has, you know, all those great features that, HTC, that Sense brings to Android, it has all of those. So it's almost like you have a smartphone, but you know you don't obviously. And so you know it has the awesome clock, has the awesome notification system that's very similar to Android with a pull down bar, the calendar, all of those great widgets that come with Android. You get with the Freestyle. Anything comparable? The the second best messaging phone feature phone would be the Pantec Laser. Not anything like the, the Freestyle because it's a different manufacturer, a different UI and OS altogether. But um. I mean, it's it's a good, it's the second best feature phone. But in terms of, of what you get in the packaging, nothing really comparable except for a smartphone, obviously. Why is it awesome when your voice cracks? I have, I don't know if it was, I think it was you on Twitter that asked me that. I'm not, it's not awesome. I'm just, you know, making fun of myself. It's just, it's funny is what it is. And so that's why I say it's awesome. Can you say, um... I you know it would be it would be kind of weird and random so I I won't I won't say my name like that. Do Windows Phone Seven phones need RAM since they don't multitask? Do they need RAM? Uh, well, first of all, we're hearing that Microsoft is going to add multitasking, so I would say yes. Um, that's a more technical question. I probably wouldn't be the best person to ask about that. So maybe somebody else can really answer that. Thank you. You're welcome, officially, Joe. Do you think I should go for a Nexus S if it comes to AT&T, or should I get an HD 7S? Um, well, the Nexus S is kind of outdated. I, I mean, processors, not a dual-core processor, not a 4G phone, unless it's the 4G version that comes to AT&T. At the same time, the HD 7S isn't, you know, it's also, I'm, I'm pretty sure, a single-core processor. Let me check. Um, yeah, a single-core processor. So in a lot of ways, it's not that much better. But, um, I mean, if you like Android, if you like the widgets, if you like multitasking, I would go with the Nexus S. But, um, it, you know, again, I think Windows Phone 7 is a lot, you know, more ad adult, you know, business um, those kind of features. Lucky, haha, ha, Asus has surprised the sensation at 8.49 and say, set, okay. I'm a big Windows Phone 7 fan, by the way, but I like the Nexus S a lot. Oh, okay, well, if you're a Windows Phone 7 fan, then just go with the HD 7S. I mean, I think that would be best bet. Um, okay, bye, Taylor. Thanks for coming. Everyone say bye, Taylor. Why is the Nexus S the best phone Sprint? It's not even as good as the Epic. Is it the best phone Sprint? Oh, is that is that on our on our top smartphones list? Uh, why is it the best phone on Sprint? Let me see. What reasons did we give? Well, it's a four. This is the four G phone that Sprint has. So you know, um, it has the latest version of Android. You know, not very many phones have that. And uh, NFC, which is apparently gaining popularity, so 
you know, in comparison to everything else they have, the Epic, uh, you know, who, I mean, updates, Samsung hasn't been very good with, with getting updates. Um, none of, I, that, you know, honestly, Aaron did that list, so you would have to ask him. Um, I think he's right. I think the Nexus S is probably the best one on Sprint, but um, you'd have to ask him his opinion. Okay, I'm going to check out Facebook again, because I know I missed a bunch of questions. Um, blog Emerge sucks, and the best UI is for the phone. But, and the best UI is for the... Okay, whatever. HTC Sense TouchWiz, and I'm not even going to mention Bodeblur. How much faster is a single-core processor than a dual-core processor? Well, it's a lot faster. You're probably going to notice it more when you're multi... When you're, we have a lot of apps running, because it's basically you have two brains doing, you know, one thing or, or two things or three things, which is going to be a lot faster. In terms of, of numbers and, and quantifying it, I mean, I, I don't do processors, so I couldn't give you the numbers, but from using phones with dual-core processor, you definitely notice it. Uh, also, do you have any news on any Samsung devices coming out? Yeah, we do. Uh, Samsung. The exhibits, I talked about that earlier, the Galaxy S2... Um, the Samsung Hercules, which we're speculating could be the T-Mobile version of the Galaxy S2, so same specs. The uh, Samsung Trender, which is actually going to be a messaging phone, that's coming to Sprint. And then that's all we have. Phone Dog is awesome. Thank you, Vincent. What's your favorite phone you have that I'm reviewing? I mean, the only phone I'm reviewing at the moment is the Crossover, so um, it's not my favorite phone by any means, so... I think that sensation is a dirty name for a smartphone, okay? Now that the Evo 4G has been updated with Gingerbread, do you have a date where the new UI will come out for it? Um, no, and HTC has commented that um, the Evo will not get the new version. Of, their older phones will not get the new version of Sense. So only the new phones ones, only the new phones will. So as far as we know, the Evo won't get the new Sense. Uh, how about those maps? Dirk is clutch. Yeah, I talked about that at the, at the beginning of the broadcast. I'm a big maps fan, so uh, definitely awesome. After game one, I had a hard time sleeping. Um, I was It was just a bad day the next day, so definitely I feel much better after getting a game two win. But game three is important. We have to win game three. Um, I think 11 times in NBA Finals history, it's been tied 1-1. And all 11 times, the team that won Game 3 won, this, won the series and the championship. So Game 3 is important. Of course, Games 1, 3, and 5, and then 7 are all, always the most important games. So, Is the Trinder a smartphone? Uh, no, I believe it's just a messaging phone. It's a, it was a great comeback. Yeah, I know. And the Mavericks have done that so many times in this postseason. They toy with my emotions so much. I was about ready to just... You just beat them all up and just call it quits. You know, if you're not going to play, then just, you might as well just go to the locker room. But then they came out with that, and Dirk was, Dirk is amazing. He gets no respect, and uh, I'm so glad that he's finally getting respect now. It's it's funny. Galaxy Prevail or Galaxy Indulge? Indulge. I no no doubts. Indulge is much better than the, than the Prevail. The Prevail is decent, but it's still kind of laggy. Um, the touchscreen was kind of choppy. The Indulge is so much better. Go with the Indulge. I say Dallas in six. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I would love for Dallas to win, but I mean, I have to. I really don't know who's going to win because both teams could. Obviously, at this point, you know, both teams have won, so we'll have to see. It's 4:59, so we have one minute. I'll answer just a couple more questions. I thought you did feature phones. Why did you do a dog fight with a droid in HD2? Oh, that was a long time ago. Um, I do some smartphones. It's not, I'm not, like, forbidden to do smartphones. Uh, HTC Flyer or Galaxy Tab 2.1. You know, the Flyer is running a version of Android that's not optimized for tablets. So I think, you know, just based on that, I would say go with the Galaxy Tab. You're going to get a much better experience. Uh, if you don't like the 10.1-inch display, then you could wait for the 8.9-inch tab. Um, that'd be better. Phones are getting outdated too fast. I thought you did it's feature five phones. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay. Um, 
how many people tweeted jokes about your idiot crossover on Box Movement? Um, a few, but it was okay. I don't mind. It was, it was funny. I decided to leave it in there. Um, okay, so it's 5 o'clock. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm sorry if I missed your questions. I obviously can't get to all of them. If you're on YouTube, thanks for watching. Leave your comments, and I will, I'll answer the ones that I can. Also, we do this every Friday, so Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on our Ustream channel. You can come and watch and uh, enjoy the conversation. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter. My screen name is It's My Job to Know. So you can ask me questions there also if I miss, miss a question. So plenty of opportunities to, to chat. We're a social website. We enjoy chatting with you guys. But thanks, guys, for coming. And uh, I'll post the video on YouTube. So I'll see you guys next week. I'm glad everyone could make it. And I'll try not to have a choppy goodbye because every time I say goodbye, it cuts off. But I'm not promising anything. But uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.